Hello everybody, what's going on? It's Lemmy King here and welcome back to another video and today we have the second annual Bowl Prediction Special by me. Uh, if you haven't seen this last one, go back a year ago and you'll probably find the last one, which was the 2015-2016 Bowl Prediction Show. But this is the 2016-2017 Bowl Prediction Show, so if you're not familiar with this, you can go watch that video. But what I do, and this is the only the second time I'm doing it, is... We go on to the Capital One Bowl Mania. Now, this is all for college football. If you don't watch college football, I mean, you might not be interested in this, but you can still participate. So, the college football season is over. It's time for the bowl games, and all of them have been matched up. All 41 of them, maybe, that have been matched up. Or 40 of them, I guess. 40 of them. But, and in any case, you can go on to different websites. I'm choosing to use the Capital One Bowl Mania by ESPN. And you go on and make your picks either straight confidence, straight or confidence, so straight, you just pick the winning team, and confidence, you could rank them about how confident you are in that team and get more points for it. So in this case, you could win money and prizes and stuff for being the best. But I just like to do this and give you guys my feedback on my picks. So I just wanted to let you guys know that these games do start tomorrow, or today, Saturday, whatever, Saturday the 19th or 18th, Saturday the 18th of December is when they start. So I just wanted to leave a little disclaimer. You can see all the ball matchups here, and I'm going to give you my feedback on who I think is going to win in my prediction. It's just a prediction. I'm no genius. I get a lot of these wrong. I got a lot wrong last year. I think I had 50% if I'm right last year. So it may not be a good thing to follow me. But I do go risking a lot of these, and I do have fun showing you guys who I think is going to win. So without further ado, let us get into the 2016-27 ball predictions. 2016-2017 ball predictions by me. The first bowl game on the list is the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl, hosted on Saturday, December 17th at 12 p.m. Eastern in the Georgia Dome, Atlanta, Georgia, on ABC. So this matchup features the North Carolina Central Eagles versus the Grambling State Tigers. And the Grambling State rallied past two-time defending champion Alcorn State to claim the SWAC crown. Uh, North Carolina Central beat rival North Carolina A&T for the MEAC championship. The Eagles 9-2 and have now won 15 straight over MEAC opponents and have taken at least a share of the conference title for three straight seasons. Grambling 11-1 is likewise master of its league having won 18 straight games in SWAC play. The Tigers are 3-0 all time against the Eagles, but the schools haven't met since the 1980s. So... I've seen, I haven't seen North Carolina Central play, but I really like how Grambling State played. I saw them in their championship game. So my prediction is I'm going to go with Grambling State. And if you're if you're curious about what the overall picks are right now, 88% of people are picking Grambling State. 12% of people are picking North Carolina Central Eagles. Second on the list is the Gilladin New Mexico Bowl on Saturday, December 17, 2016 at 2 p.m. Eastern Time in University Stadium, New Mexico, which is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this features the New Mexico Lobos at 8-4 and, and the Texas San Antonio Roadrunners at 6-6 six six. on Saturday. New Mexico ran for 428 yards in the first half alone, beating MWC Mountain Champion Wyoming to finish 8-4 in the school's best season since former coach Rocky Long's penultimate campaign in 2007. The Lobos lost 45-37 Thriller to Arizona at home in last year's New Mexico Bowl. First year UTSA head coach Frank Wilson, formerly Les Miles running backs coach and top recruiter at LSU, replaced retiring Larry Cooker and led the Roadrunners to a second place finish in the Conference USA West in the school's first bowl game in its just sixth year of football. So in this game, I am going to be going with the New Mexico Lobos, and I think that most people agree because the line is 89% of people are picking New Mexico, and 11% are picking Texas San Antonio. Next up is the Las Vegas Bowl, which is Saturday, December 17, 2016, at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time in Sam Boyd Stadium, Las Vegas, Nevada, on ABC. And this matchup features the Houston Cougars and the San Diego State Aztecs. San Diego State, 10-3, has clinched the MWC West Division early and then faltered down the stretch with losses to Wyoming and Colorado State before rallying for a 27-24 win over the Cowboys 
on the road in the Mountain West Championship game. Aztec star running back Donnell Pumphrey needs just 108 yards to surpass Wisconsin's Ron Dwayne or Dine as all-time FBS career rushing leader. Former defensive coordinator and interim head coach Todd Orlando will lead the 9-3 Houston into this group of five heavyweight matchup after the departure of Tom Herman to Texas. Now the line on this one, 75% of people are picking Houston and 25% of people are picking San Diego State. And personally, I'm going to go with the majority on this one and I'm going to pick the Houston Cougars to top San Diego State. Up next is the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl, hosted on Saturday, December 17th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern in the Crampton Bowl, Montgomery, Alabama on ESPN. And this matchup features the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Toledo Rockets. In a return visit to Montgomery for the 9-3 Sun Belt co-champion Appalachian State, who defeated the MAC entrant Ohio in a 31-29 thriller in last year's Camellia Bowl, in the former FCS powerhouse first bowl game since moving up to the FBS in 2014. Toledo at 9-3 has just had four head coaches in eight years but finished a seventh straight winning season. The Rockets finished second in the rugged Mac West this season and last year beat a ranked Temple game, a ranked Temple team in the Boca Raton Bowl. The line on this one is very close. It's 51% picking Appalachian State and 49% picking Toledo, and I'm going to have to lean towards the majority side in this one. I think it's going to be a really close game, but I think Appalachian State is always a pretty decent team. I've seen them play a couple times when they played Penn State, but Appalachian State, I think, will be the victor in this one. Up next, we got the Auto Nation Cure Ball, which is on Saturday, December 17th, 2016, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time in Camping World Stadium, Orlando, Florida, on the CBS Sports Network. In this matchup, hosts the 6-6 six six UCF Knights and the 7-5 Arkansas State Red Wolves. Arkansas State began the season 0-4 in non-conference play, but rallied for a 7-5 record and Sun Belt co-championship, the Red Wolves' third league title in four years. Central Florida finished 6-6 six six under first-year coach Scott Frost, a year after turning in a winless season in George O'Leary's final turn with the program. The Knights play their home games across town in Bright House Network Stadium. So a lot of people, 71% of them, are going with the UCF Knights, and 29% of people are going with the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Even though UCF is playing just across town in Orlando, after all the coaching dilemma and stuff that's been going on at UCF, I'm going to have to go with the minority here, and I'm going to pick on the upset of Arkansas State beating UCF in this game. Up next is the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl, hosted on Saturday, December 17th, 2016, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time in Mercedes-Benz Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana, on ESPN. And this matchup features the 6-6 six six Southern Miss Golden Eagles and the 6-6 six six Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. Southern Miss struggled after losing quarterback Nick Mullins for a late-season stretch, but rallied to secure bowl eligibility with a win, with a home win over Conference USA West champion Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Lafayette also gained eligibility in its final game, trouncing rival Louisiana Monroe to close the season at 6-6. Six six. The Cajuns' only bowl appearance in school history are a quartet of New, Year, New Orleans bowl victories from 2011 to 2014. These schools have met 50 times, with Southern Miss holding a 38-11-1 series lead, including a current 8-game winning streak over the Cajuns last class coming in 2008. So in this game, 60% of people are picking Southern Miss, and 40% of people are picking Louisiana Lafayette. I am going to lean towards the majority. I've seen the Raging Cajuns play. I just like their name, too. I think they're a pretty decent team. I think they could beat Southern Miss. So I'm going to lean on Louisiana Lafayette to pull out the win in the New Orleans Bowl. Up next, we got the Miami Beach Bowl, which is Monday, December 19th, two 2016 at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time in Marlins Park, Miami, Florida on ESPN. And this matchup features the 6-6 six and six, the six and six Central Michigan Chippewas versus the 9-3 and three Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Tulsa ended last season former Baylor offensive coordinator Philip Montgomery's first as head coach with a 6-7 and seven record and a narrow bowl loss in Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer's final game. 
This year, the Golden Hurricanes proved improved to a 9-3, finishing second in the AAC West Division. The senior-laden Chippewas finished with a disappointing 6-6 six six record after a fifth-place finish in the MAC West. So 87% of people are leaning towards Tulsa. 13% of people are picking Central Michigan. I haven't really watched either of these two teams. I don't know much about them, but Tulsa's always a pretty decent contender, so I'm going to have to lean with the majority and go with Tulsa in the victory in the Miami Beach Bowl. Up next is the Boca Raton Bowl, Tuesday, December 20th, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time in Florida Atlantic University Football Stadium, Boca Raton, Florida, on ESPN. And this matchup is the 8-4 Memphis Tigers and the 10-3 Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Defensive coordinator Nick Holt will lead the two-time defending conference USA champion Western Kentucky into this game after head coach Jeff Brom departed for Purdue following a 10-3 Hilltoppers 58-44 victory over Louisiana Tech in the Conference USA title game. First-year Memphis head coach Mike Norville built on the momentum of Justin Fuente's era with an 8-4 record and third-place finish in the AAC West. The Tigers are bowling for the third straight year and just the ninth time in school history. So this one, 65% of people are picking Western Kentucky and... 35% of people are picking the Memphis Tigers, and I'm going to have to lean with the majority. I saw Mr. Mich or Western Kentucky play. I think they're a pretty decent team. Not really a great defense, but they have a lot of offense, and I think they will pull away in the Boca Raton Bowl, so I'm going to have to go with Western Kentucky. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, hosted on Wednesday, December 21st, 2016 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time from Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, California, on ESPN. And this hosts the 8-4 Birmingham Young Cougars and the 8-5 Wyoming Cowboys. The old WAC and Mountain West rivals unite for the 78th time and the first since 2010. Independent BYU acquitted itself very well in coach Kelly and Sykes. First year at the helm, finishing 8-4 and four with four losses by a combined eight points against a schedule that included six Power League foes who went bowling in 2015, plus group of five heavyweights Toledo, Cincinnati, and Boise State. Wyoming won the MWC Central, the MWC Mountain Division before falling to San Diego State in the league title game to finish 8-5. and five. So 74% of people are picking BYU, and 26% of people are picking the Wyoming Cowboys. I'm going to have to lean with the majority, and I'm going with BYU in this one. Next is the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Thursday, December 22nd, 2016, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time in Albertson Stadium, Boise, Idaho, on ESPN. This matchup features the Idaho Vandals and the Colorado State Rams. Fourth-year coach Paul Petrino led Idaho to an 8-4 mark and the Vandals' third bowl berth since 2009 in the school's final year of FBS play before moving back to the F to the FCS Big Sky Conference next season. Colorado State won 4 of 5 down the stretch to finish 7 of 5 in Mike Bobo's second year as coach. The Rams closed 2015 with an Arizona Bowl loss to Nevada and have now qualified for the postseason for the fourth straight year. 68% of people are picking Colorado State, and 32% of people are picking Idaho. I'm going to have to go with the majority, and I'm going with Colorado State in this one. The Popeyes Bahamas Bowl, Friday, December 23rd, 2016, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Robin Thomas Robinson Stadium in Nassau on ESPN. This features the 7-5 Eastern Michigan Eagles and the 9-3 Old Dominion Monarchs. It's the first bowl game for Old Dominion program that revived football in 2009 after a 70-year hiatus, then move up to the FBS and Conference USA in 2014. The 9-3 Monarchs closed 2016 with five straight wins and were in the hunt for the Conference USA title right until the season's last week. Long-suffering Mac entered Eastern Michigan's 7-5 season is the program's best since the 10-2 campaign in 1987, and the result is the school's second bowl berth. These teams met in non-conference play each of the past two Septembers, with Old Dominion winning both times. Old Dominion has 70% of the picks, and Eastern Michigan has 30%. I'm going to go with the majority, and I'm going to go with Old Dominion in this one. The Lockheed Martin, Martin Armed Forces Bowl, Friday, December 23rd at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Amundi Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas on ESPN, and this one features the 8-5 Louisiana Tech Bulldogs and the number 25 ranked 9-4 Navy Midshipmen. Louisiana Tech 
eight and five, won the conference USA West division, and lost in the league title game for the second straight time in three years. This time to Western Kentucky. Navy nine and three likewise won the American Athletic West division, but fell to Temple in its conference championship game, losing standout quarterback Will 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 to injury as well. Only the only previous meetings between these two schools are a pair of Navy victories in two thousand nine and two thousand ten. 85% of people are picking Navy to win this one, 15% picking Louisiana Tech. After seeing Navy play in the championship game against Temple and against Army, I'm going to go in the 15% mark, and I'm picking Louisiana Tech over Navy in this one. The Dollar General Bowl, Friday, December 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time from Lad Pables Stadium in Mobile, Alabama on ESPN. This one features Ohio and Troy. A game effort against unbeaten Western Michigan was not quite enough, and Ohio found itself MAC East champs, but losers in the MAC championship game for the fourth time in Coach Frank Solich's 12 years at the school. The Bobcats finished 8-5 and five and are bowling for the seventh straight time in eight years. Troy was 8-1 and one and ranked on the top in the top 25 at one point, but lost two of its past three to miss out on the share of the Sun Belt title. First-year coach Neil Brown has the Trojans bowling for the first time since 2010. 59% of people are picking Troy, 41% of people are picking Ohio. I'm going to go with the minority here, and I'm going to go with the Ohio Bobcats in this one. The Hawaii Bowl, Saturday, December 24th, 2016, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, from Aloha Stadium, Honolulu, Hawaii, on ESPN. This one features the 6-7 and seven Rainbow Warriors and the 8-4 and four Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. Hawaii, eligible at 6-7 and seven via an exemption, is bowling for the first time since 2010. The Rainbow Warriors finished alone in second place in the Mountain West Conference West Division this year, and are four and four in bowl games played at home in Aloha Stadium. Middle Tennessee was six and two, and was still in the hunt for the Conference USA title when a star quarterback Brent Stockstill, the son of longtime coach Rick Stockstill, was lost for the season in Week 11. The Raiders then lost two straight, but scored 115 points in their final two games to finish eight and four and third place in the Conference USA East. So 80% of people are picking the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders, and I'm going to have to agree with them. I think they're a better team. So I'm going to be picking Middle Tennessee in this one. St. Petersburg Bowl, Monday, December 26th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida on ESPN. Features Miami, Ohio Red Hawks at 6-6 six and six and the Mississippi State Bulldogs at 5-7. and seven. Miami became the first team in FBS history to start a season 0 and 6 and finish it 6 and 0. The Red Hawks surged behind sophomore quarterback Gus Braylon, who took the reins mid-season after returning from a spring injury. Miami's first bowl assignment since 2010 will be a tall order against the SEC entrant Mississippi State, who clinched bowl berth at 5 and 7 season with a season-ending whipping of Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl and an APR score strong enough to earn the Bulldogs' seventh consecutive postseason appearance. Only one of two awarded to five win squads this year. 82% of people are picking Mississippi State over Miami, and I'm going to have to agree with them and pick Mississippi State over the Miami Redhawks. The Quick Lane Bowl, Monday, December 26th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan on ESPN. Features the 6-6 six six Maryland Terrapins and the 6-6 six six Boston College Eagles. Boston College would have cracked the postseason lineup at 5-7 and seven thanks to a sky-high APR, but the Eagles moved to 6-6 six six with a row win at Wake Forest, winning the consecutive ACC games for just the third time since 2010. Maryland started the season 4-0, but needed a season-ending win over Rutgers to earn a bowl berth at 6-6. Six six. Boston College won 7-9 of nine in this series, when the two were ACC league mates from 2005 to 2014. 56% of people are picking Maryland, and I'm going to go with them, and I'm also going to pick Maryland in this game. The Camping World Independence Bowl, Monday, December 26th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time from Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana on ESPN2. Features the NC State Wolfpack at 6-6 six six versus the Vanderbilt Commodores at 6-6. Six six. Vanderbilt earned the first bowl berth of a third-year coach, Derek Mason's tenure, with a convincing win over Tennessee in the season finale. The Commodores beat NC State in the 2012 Music City Bowl. This year's pack edition was Dave Doran's fourth and, like Vandy, used the season-ending upset win over an in-state rival North Carolina to reach the postseason at 6-6. Six and 62% six. of people are picking NC State, and I'm going to have to them. NC State has played better all year, and based on watching them, I'm going with NC State in this one. The Zaxby's Heart of Dallas Bowl, Tuesday, December 27th, 12 p.m. Eastern Time from Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas, on ESPN, features the 7-5 Army Black Knights versus 
55 and 7 North Texas Mean Green. North Texas fought, thought it had blown its chance at the postseason when it lost at UTEP to close the season, but the Mean Green got a reprieve thanks to a high APR score and became one of just two bowl bound teams at 5 and 7. Army sits at 6 and 5, entering the end of its season and obviously beat Navy and moved to 7 and 5. The Black Knights played a Texas team in the Metroplex when they last bowled in 2010, beating SMU in the Armed Forces Bowl. North Texas' last bowl appearance was a win over UNLV in the game, in this game in 2013. 90% of people are going with Army, and I agree, Army is a better team. North Texas doesn't necessarily be there really with five and seven, so I'm gonna have to go with Army. The military bowl presented by Northrop Grumman, Tuesday, December 27th at 3:30 p.m. Eastern Time from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland, on ESPN. Features the 24th ranked Temple Owls at 10 and three and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons at 6-6. Six and six. The American Athletic Conference champion Temple returns to the scene of its last game, a 34-10 win over Navy in the AAC title game. The Owls are gunning for a first 11-win season in school history. Wake Forest clinched a bowl berth back in Week 11 and lost three straight to finish at 6-6. Six and six. It's the Deke's first bowl berth since Jim Grope's last six-win campaign in 2011, which ended in a Music City Bowl loss to Mississippi State. 92% of people are picking Temple, and I think Temple's a better team, so I'm going to have to go with Temple in this one. The National Funding Holiday Bowl, Tuesday, December 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time from Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, California, on ESPN, features the 8-4 Minnesota Gophers and the 8-4 Washington State Cougars. Minnesota was one of the trio of 5-7 and seven teams invited to last year's postseason party, each of which won its bowl game. The Gophers knocked off Central Michigan in Detroit to close the 2015 and rode that momentum into an 8 and 4 mark this year and the school's second winning second winning record in Big 10 play since 2003. Washington State was in the driver's seat for the first Pac-12 championship since 2002 all the way up to the season's finale, but the Cougars didn't get past Washington in the Apple Cup finishing 8 and 4 and alone in second place in the Pac-12 North. 72% of people are picking Washington State in this one. Now, I believe Minnesota is a better team. Minnesota's played everybody tough. Right now, I have Minnesota as the winner. However, if they go on with what's going on over on campus right now where they're boycotting the bowl game until they get what they want, if that ends up happening, I'll have to switch over to Washington State because, I mean, I'm not going to pick a team that's not going to show up. So, right now, I have Minnesota, but that may change. The Motel 6 Cactus Bowl, Tuesday, December 27th at 10.15 p.m. Eastern Time from Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona on ESPN. Features the 10-2 Boise State Broncos and the 6-6 Baylor Bears. Baylor started tr started a trying season 6-0 before losing quarterback Seth Russell and six straight games, four by at least three scores. Interim coach Jim Grope and Art Browse, former assistants, will guide the Bears to one last time in the bowl game. Former WAC overlord Boise State won 10 games for the 14th time in 18 seasons, but still has just won outright conference title since moving up to the Mountain West in 2011. Third-year coach Brian Harson has thus far continued predecessor Chris Peterson's record of strong bowl performances, beating 12th-ranked Arizona and demolishing Mac Powerhouse Northern Illinois in his first two postseason chances. 83% of people are going with Boise State in this one, and I'm also going with Boise State in this game. The New Era Pinstripe Bowl, Wednesday, December 28th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time from Yankee Stadium in New York, New York on ESPN. Features the number 23rd ranked Pittsburgh Panthers at 8-4 versus the Northwestern Wildcats at 6-6. Six six. Pittsburgh scored more than 58 points per game during its season-ending three-game win streak. The Panthers finished 8-4 and 4th four and place in the ACC Coastal. Northwestern battled to a 6-6 six six mark after a rough start to the season. The Wildcats are bowl eligible for the 11th time in 14 seasons, but just have one bowl win in that time. So, 92% of people are going with Pittsburgh in this one, and I'm going to have to agree with them. Pittsburgh seems to be the better team. I'm a Big Ten fan. I like Northwestern to win, but Pittsburgh seems like the better team, and I'm going to have to go with them. The Russell Athletic Bowl, Wednesday, December 28th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida on ESPN features the number 16th ranked West Virginia Mountaineers and the Miami Hurricanes. Coach Mike Ritt will try to improve to an impressive 10-5 and career bowl record in his first year with his new team. The Hurricanes combined experience under center with a very young defense to finish third in ACC Coastal 
and eight and four overall. Miami holds a 16 to three series lead over former Big East rival West Virginia. The Mountaineers beat Baylor in the season finale to wrap up the 10 minute campaign and third place in the Big 12 finish. 79% of people are going with West Virginia with this one, and I'm going to have to agree, I'm going to pick West Virginia in this game. The Foster Farms Bowl, Wednesday, December 28th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Levi's Stadium, Santa Clara, California on Fox, features the Indiana Hoosiers sitting at 6-6 six and six, and the 19th ranked Utah Utes at 8-4. and four. Defensive coordinator Tom Allen takes over, for permanently, takes over permanently at Indiana for the departed Kevin Wilson. The Hoosiers fielded their best defense in years and will face another defensive-minded outfit as they play consecutive bowl games for the first time since 1991. Utah was in the hunt for the Pac-12 title until late in the season losses to Oregon. Utah, the Utes boss Kyle Whittingham is 9-1 in bowl games. 91% of people are going with Utah, and I'm going to have to agree with them. Indiana can hold it close against all the big contenders in the Big Ten, but they lost all of them. So I'm going to have to go with Utah on this one. The Advocare V100 Texas Bowl, Wednesday, December 28th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time from NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas on ESPN. Features the 8-4 Texas A&M Aggies and the 8-4 Kansas State Wildcats. Texas A&M was ranked 4th for the first playoff standing, but the Aggies lost quarterback Trevor Knight in their last four SEC games to slump to 8-4. Kansas State is also 8-4, but won 5 of 6 to close the season. The Wildcats won the past three meetings between these teams as Big 12 rivals, as predicating Kevin Sullivan's arrival in College Station. 79% of people are picking Texas A&M in this game. I'm going to go against it. I'm going to go with the 21% picking Kansas State because I've seen Kansas State play. I think they're overall a better team, so I'm going with Kansas State in this one. The Birmingham Bowl, Thursday, December 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama on ESPN. This features the South Florida Bowl sitting at 10-2 and, and the South Carolina Gamecocks sitting at 6-6. Six and six. South Carolina won four of six down the stretch in Coach, Mu in Coach Will Muschamp's first season thanks to the emergence of freshman quarterback Jake Bentley. The Gamecocks ended the season with an ugly loss to rival Clemson, getting outgained by more than 400 yards in a 56-7 route. Dual threat Quinton Flowers operates South Florida's seventh-ranked de scoring, de scoring offense. The 10-2 Bulls have scored fewer than 35 points just once all season. 76% of people are going with South Florida in this one, and I'm going to have to agree with them and pick South Florida in this game. The Belk Bowl, Thursday, December 29th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina on ESPN features the 705 Arkansas Razorbacks and the 22nd ranked Virginia Tech Hokies sitting at 9 and 4. Virginia Trek traded below with Clemson in the ACC championship game and had a chance at the end. The Hokies won nine games for the first time since 2011 in Justin Fuente's first season. Virginia Tech has the nation's longest active bowl streak at 24 games. Arkansas alternated wins and losses after the first two games of the year, finishing 7-5 and 5th in the SEC West. The Razorbacks have won both bowl games under Brett Palima, who was 2-4 in bowl games as a coach of Wisconsin, including a bowl win over the Hogs in his first season with the Badgers. 77% of people are picking Virginia Tech to win this game. Arkansas could be a threat, but I'm going to have to go with Virginia Tech in this ball <coughs> in this ball game. The Valero Alamo Bowl, Thursday, December 29th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas on ESPN features the 12th ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys and the 10th ranked Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado's best season since 2001 ended with a lopsided loss to Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. Then the Buffs lost out in Rose Bowl berth to USC in what the playoff committee indicated was a tougher decision. Oklahoma State faced rival Oklahoma with the Big 12 title in the pot, but lost to the Sooners for the 12th time in 14 games. The Cowboys were blown out by Ole Miss in last year's Sugar Bowl, but enjoyed a 36-10 romp over Arizona in the 2010 Alamo Bowl. 56% of people are picking Colorado. This game is going to be close. Tough one to pick. I'm going with Oklahoma State in this one, however. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl, Friday, December 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time from the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee on ESPN. Features the 7-5 Georgia Bulldogs and the 6-6 TCU Horn Frogs. Coach Kirby Smart navigated Georgia to a 6-6 mark his first season at the helm of the Bulldogs. 
and he took over a program accustomed to postseason success as predecessor Mark Ritt won 10 bowls in 15 tries, including wins over Louisville and Penn State the past two seasons. TCU <coughs> is also familiar with postseason success, as the Horned Frogs have won 8 of their past 10 bowl games with Gary Pedersen in charge, including last year's record-tying comeback from a 31 to nothing deficit to Oregon in the Alamo Bowl. 76% of people are picking Georgia in this one. I'm also going to go with the majority and go with Georgia in this game. The Hyundai Sun Bowl, Friday, December 30th at 2 p.m. Eastern from Sun Bowl Stadium in El Paso, Texas on CBS. The 18th ranked Stanford Cardinal, 9-3 versus the North Carolina Tar Heels at 8-4. North Carolina still had an outside shot in the ACC title entering week 14, but the result was disappointing in an 8-4 campaign that saw the Heels lose as double-digit favorites to both triangle rivals Duke and NC State. Stanford started slowly with a suffering offense, but finished 9-3 with 2015 Heisman finalist Christian McCaffrey leading the nation in all-purpose yards again, a year after Barry Sanders' 30-year-old all-purpose yardage record. 81% of people are going with Stanford in this one, <coughs> and I am also going to have to lean with number 18 Stanford Cardinal in this game. The Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl, Friday, December 30th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee on ESPN. Features Nebraska Cornhuskers at 9-3 and, and the number 21st ranked Tennessee Volunteers at 8-4. <coughs> Tennessee returns to the scene of its last game, a 45-34 road loss to Vanderbilt in Nashville. This time, though, the Vols will play in, some, in the home of the, NFL, the NFL's Titans as they look for a third consecutive lopsided ball win over a Big Ten West challenger. Nebraska couldn't keep quarterback Tommy Andre unhealthy down the stretch and lost 3 of 5 after a 7 0 start. Between coach Bob Devaney's start in 1962 and to the firing of Frank Solich after 2003 season, Nebraska has lost more than three games just four times. It's happened in 12 straight years since then. But the Huskers still have a shot to break that streak with a 10 and 3 finish. So 52% of people are going with Nebraska in this one. This one should be a close, fun game, and I'm going to have to go with the Big Ten here and pick Nebraska in this game. Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl, Friday, December 30th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona on CAMP. And this features the South Alabama Jaguars at 6-6 six six versus the Air Force Falcons at 9-3. South Alabama came from behind against New Mexico State to win its sixth game and it clinched the program's second bowl berth. The Jaguars beat Mississippi State in Starkville to open the season, but just went 2-6 and six in Sunbelt play. Air Force suffered a three-game losing scheme midseason, but finished 9-3, and three, beating Navy and Army to regain the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. The Falcons have won three of eight bowls under coach Troy Calhoun. 94% of people are going with Air Force, and I agree completely. I think Air Force is going to win this game. The Capital One Orange Bowl, Friday, December 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern from Hard Rock Stadium, Miami, Florida on ESPN. Features the number 6 Michigan Wolverines and the number 11 Florida State Seminoles. Louisville's loss to Kentucky landed the Seminoles in this game, where they'll meet Michigan for the first time since 1991. A loss would leave the Noles at 9-4 and, and equal Jimbo Fisher's worst season as coach. Michigan started the season 9-0, but finished with a 10-2 mark. Bitterly disappointed? With an officiating loss to Ohio State in the first overtime game between the schools. So 87% of people have Michigan in this game, and I'm going to have to agree with them. I think Michigan's a way better team than Florida State, and I'm going with Michigan in this one. The Buffalo Wild Wings Citrus Bowl, Saturday, December 31st at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. From Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida on ABC features the number 20th ranked LSU Tigers and the 13th ranked Louisville Cardinals. Louisville was ranked as high as third in the nation but lost its last two games to Houston and Kentucky and fell out of consideration for a New Year's Six ball berth. LSU followed a tough offseason with a wild season that saw longtime boss Les Miles supplanted by Ed Orgeron. The Tigers went 5-2 and two after coach took over averaging more than 34 points a game in the wins. So 66% of people are picking Louisville in this game, and I'm going to have to agree with them. I think Louisville is a better team, and I'm going to go with Louisville in this one. 
The Tax Slayer Bowl, Saturday, December 31st at 11 a.m. Eastern Time from Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida on ESPN. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets versus the Kentucky Wildcats. Georgia Tech turned, into a, turned in a losing season last year, ending an 18-year bowl streak. The Jackets rebounded with po Coach Paul Johnson's ninth season in an 8-4 campaign, capped by a win over rival Georgia. Kentucky is handed, it's headed to its first bowl since 2010, and the game, widely known as the Gator Bowl, is delighted to host a bowl-hungry SEC fan base. Both teams boast rushing offenses among the nation's top 15. 66% of people are going with Georgia Tech, and I'm going to have to side with them and pick Georgia Tech in this one. The National Semifinal Number 1 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Saturday, December 31st at 3 p.m. Eastern from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia on ESPN. Features the number 4 Washington Huskies and the number 1 Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama will play a second straight game in familiar confines of the Georgia Dome. The three-time SEC champion gave up a touchdown for the first time in four games but still down Florida 54-16. Washington handed Colorado in the Pac-12 game for its first league championship since Rick Newhassel's 2000 squad. Both teams boast a superstar underclassman at quarterback and both have a lost a pair of defenses all-stars to injury the past few weeks. 92% of people are going with Alabama in this one. I think Washington is going to get killed in this game. I don't believe they should be number four. I think they should be number five, just a personal preference. I don't see Washington having any chance in this game, and I'm going Alabama big on this one. Semi-final number two, the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, Saturday, December 31st, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, from the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, on ESPN. Features the number three, Ohio State Buckeyes, and number two, Clemson Tigers. Clubs should capture back-to-back -back ACC championships by outlasting Virginia Tech, while the Buckeyes lost to Penn State, relegated them to second place in the Big Ten East. Coach Dabo Sweeney's Tigers handed Urban Meyer a 40-35 loss in the 2013 Orange Bowl. Meyer's first bowl game was Ohio State head coach. Clemson and Ohio State, along with Alabama, are the only teams to make multiple playoff appearances in the three years of the new postseason structure. 58% of people are going with Ohio State in this one. And I believe in the Big Ten. I believe that Ohio State can do it. This one's going to be a really good game, really close game, but I think Ohio State can pull it off. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, Monday, January 2nd, 2017, at 1 p.m. Eastern on 18... On ESPN from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. This features the number 15 ranked Western Michigan Broncos and the 8th ranked Wisconsin Badgers. Wisconsin saw its quest for a 4th Big Ten championship game in 7 years and when the Badgers couldn't hold a 28-7 lead over Penn State. A bowl victory would give the program its 4th 11 win season in that same spam. Western Michigan and fanatically energized coach PJ Fleck authori authored a 2016 season only unbeaten campaign besides Alabama's. The Broncos held off a game held off a game Ohio team in the Mac Chidal game to about to go thirteen and zero and registers the school's first Mac championship game since nineteen eighty eight. The unprecedented in the league talent Fleck has stockpiled veteran leadership at every position and a superstar difference maker in all time FBS receiving leader Corey Davis, the Broncos could well be the best team in Mac history. So, 79% of people are going with Wisconsin's one. I think Western Michigan is a really good team, but I think Wisconsin and the Big Ten powerhouses are too much for Western Michigan to handle, and I'm going with Wisconsin in this one. The Outback Bowl, Monday, January 2nd, 2017, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, on ABC. The 17th-ranked Florida Gators versus the Iowa Hawkeyes. I will beat Florida here in 2003 affair, when the Gators got revenge two years later. Hawkeyes are 2-2 two two in the Outback Bowl appearances under Kirk Frentz, all against SEC opposition. Iowa held Michigan, Illinois, and Nebraska to a combined 23 points during a three-game win streak to close the year. After winning at LSU to clinch the SEC East crown, Florida was beaten convincingly, but first by Florida State, then Alabama in the league championship game. 68% of people are picking Florida in this game. I don't see Florida being that good of a team. I think Iowa has the edge here, and I think Iowa's going to pull out the victory in this one. The Granddaddy of Mall, the Rose Bowl game, presented by Northwestern Mutual, Monday, to Monday, January 2nd, 2017, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, on ESPN, which features the number 9 USC Trojans and the number 5 Penn State Nittany Lions. 
USC beat Colorado in October and closed the season with an 8 game win streak, thus beating the Buffaloes out for the Rose Bowl spot to oppose Big Ten champion Penn State. The last Rose Bowl appearance for the Trojan was a 38-24 win over the Lions after the 2008 season, then coached Pete Carroll's next to last with the Trojans. The Lions won the Big Ten title after overcoming a 28-7 deficit against Wisconsin, once again showing off a potent downfield passing game. 61% of people are picking Penn State in this one, and obviously I'm going to pick the team that I love, the team that I go to school with. I know a lot of these guys, they're great people, and I think Penn State overall is a better team, should be number four in the country, but Penn State overall is a better team, and they will beat USC. The All-State Sugar Bowl, Monday, January 2nd, 2017, at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time for Mercedes-Benz Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana, on ESPN. This features the number 14th ranked Auburn Tigers and the number 7th ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Big 12 champion Oklahoma started the season 1-2, and two, but rattled off 9 straight wins and landed in the Sugar Bowl for the second time in four years. Auburn limps at an 8-4, having lost November games to rivals Georgia and Alabama, but still gets the nod in the second-best SEC squad in the down year for the league. A shootout could be in store as Oklahoma's offense features two Heisman finalists and the Tigers have rushed for more than 400 yards four times this year. 86% of people are picking Oklahoma to win this game. I agree with them. I think Oklahoma's a better team than Auburn and I'm going with Oklahoma in this one. And last but not least, the College Football Playoff National Championship game Monday, January 9, 2017 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. And this game will be the winner of the Washington-Alabama game and the winner of the Ohio State-Clemson game. So we'll have to wait and see until one of those two teams gets in. As of now, the winner of the Washington-Alabama game, which is probably going to be Alabama, has a 76% picking rate over the winner of the Ohio State-Clemson game. I'm also picking Alabama. I don't know if Ohio State or Clemson can stop Alabama's offense. I just can't see them getting past their defense either. I think Alabama's going to win this game. It's sad to say it. I don't like Alabama, but I think Alabama is the best team. So with that going through, there are all my bowl game picks for this year. Once again, just a little disclaimer here. I'm not an expert here. I just go by what I feel, what I've seen throughout the year, and these are just my personal picks. So if you want to go online, you can go on the College Bowl Mania, Capital One Bowl Mania on ESPN and play that, or you can go find different sites with cool cool prizes and all kinds of stuff like that and just have fun time with it. So I enjoy doing it, and I just like sharing it with you guys in case you guys need any secondary like advising but that's what i got to share for you guys today so thanks for watching guys hopefully you all enjoyed if you please remember to leave a like it would be greatly appreciated and comment down below if you have any different picks compared to mine and you know talk about it just don't want to get any arguments on youtube because that might not end well but anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll see all of you guys next time